uh, for the information, and we're going to make sure that your chat comments will not be in the recording, neither will your names. And I will pass you the ball, Corey. Okay. Is the PowerPoint, oh, here it is here. Yes, it is. Just click on Budget 101. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody for coming this evening. And sorry for those that were hoping Carrie Lee could make it. Um, she actually under the weather. So I'm her replacement. Um, hopefully I do half as well as she would have. Um, so I'm just going to do a little intro. My name is Corey Hargraves. I'm the financial counselor with CISA Financial at CFB Esquimo. And I've been with CISA Financial for about three years now. Prior to that, uh, I have about 12 years experience in the financial service industry. And that's primarily been in credit and collection management. So if anybody has any questions regarding that stuff specifically, feel free to ask. Um, I'll provide my contact information at the end of the uh, briefing. And you can always feel free to email me as well. And I'm, I'm pretty relaxed with these presentations. So if anybody has a question at all at any time, feel free to just raise your hand. Um, or you can put it in the chat, whatever's easiest for you. But uh, yeah, let's just have fun and pretty laid back presentation. All right, CISA Financial. So who here has heard of CISA Financial and some of the services we offer? You can just so give us a green check, check. Give a green check. Whatever works. Red X if you have not. Okay. Well, good. That's all right. Um, I'm guessing most people probably associate System Financial with uh, the insurance, which is a huge part of what we do. Um, but we also do the financial counseling and the financial planning, which is the investment uh, side of the business. So we're a division. Uh, that falls under the CFMWS, or Canadian Forces Morale and Welfare Services. And we're responsible to the Chief of Defense Staff to provide morale and welfare services uh, to the Canadian Forces and their families. And we fall under the same division as CANEX. Uh, CISA Financial's vision is that every member of the CAF community and their family has financial health and security. Oh, Pam's from Kingston. I'm just going to take the ball, Corey, from you for a moment. Yeah. In order for Corey to have an idea of the, the level of investment knowledge, we're just going to do a short poll here. Um, to, to I'm going to open it up, and what is your level of knowledge? If you can just fill that in, that would be wonderful with reference to budgeting and finance. Great. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now, and we'll uh, we'll show those results. Okay, so it's a pretty decent mixture. Um, so really today what we're going to go over is we're just going to discuss the, the basics of, uh, of budgeting. Um, and hopefully at the end of the presentation you're going to be able to do um, five things listed here below. Uh, first one you know, is, is action. Um, taking control over your financial situation as much as you're able to, right? Creating a budget, you know, your income versus your expenses. Create a plan, you know, what you want moving forward. Um, determine, determine the best way to track your expenses and your spending. And at the end of the presentation, we want to provide you with the tools and abilities to kind of evaluate or reevaluate your budget. All right, so if you're experiencing financial difficulty or you just want to get a better handle on your finances, 
Um, so what are some things you can do? Well, um, these are some things that you can that are in your control that you can do something about. Uh, first one is to do something, right? Act quickly. Uh, don't wait around. Anything financial, it, it never tends to get easier. Typically, financial matters only get worse, right? Creating a budget, that's another thing you can do. Um, and we're going to cover that today. A lot of the time, improving your financial situation or your budget comes down to two basic things. Make more money or spend less. Uh, so we're just going to cover a couple tips on how you might be able to boost your income or reduce some of your expenses. Um, also, another major part, uh, getting your debts under control and reducing them and using the resources and benefits that are out there. There are so many resources and tools that are out there. Uh, sometimes it can be overwhelming, I know. Um, you just got to pick what works best for you and wh how you like to budget and what you like to use. That's what you got to go with. And so we're going to provide you with some, some resources and tools uh, that you might want to use. All right, so where do you start? Right. First step is you need to figure out how much money you bring in. Uh, so you just got to calculate your income. How you do that, pay stub, income statements. If you have any other sources of income, those sort of statements. Once you have that down, uh, you need to estimate your expenses and your monthly costs, where your money's going. Um, so that, it's bills, receipts, bank statements, any sort of debt statements, um, collect those up because uh, you'll need them to calculate, you know, what's going out. Once you have this information, you need somewhere to put it. Um, so I'm going to provide you with a resource today that you can use. Um, you can do digital format. You can do old school and just write out your budget, which is what I do. I just use a pen and paper. Really, it doesn't matter how you do it uh, as long as you can record it somewhere, right? Um, so I'm going to ask you guys a question here. Most of you follow some sort of budget. Um, for the typical family budget, and you can just put it in the chat. You can yell it out if you want. For the typical family budget, what does everybody think the biggest expense is for, for the typical family? Ooh. I'm going to say. I know the answer, so I'm not going to say anything. I was going to say food, too, Alicia, or Valerie. I'm going to say debt, like credit cards, loans. In Canada, it has to be mortgage because, of course, you're renting, right? Hmm. So we have food, mortgages, groceries, and debt. Debt, rent, food, okay. So, Stats Canada. We pay that much in taxes? Ta taxes, and this is typical family. I mean, taxes are one of the biggest, but uh, everybody was on it, right? Food, clothing, shelter. Um, it's kind of household stuff. And I bet, I don't know when the, these stats are quoted from, but I bet, you know, especially now, though that percentage might be a little bit higher now, right? Because the cost of food and everything has gone up quite significantly. Um, but yeah, cabbage, at, cabbage at seven dollars a head. <laughs> yeah. Grapes. I don't know how much grapes were, either. But yeah, everything's kind of expensive. So, but frozen vegetables. That's a good. Uh, the still nutritious. They usually use high quality for that, and it's cheaper. So, you need your veggies. So you know, consider buying frozen, right? <laughs> All right. And it works better in a smoothie. There you go. You do. Uh, so let's get into the actual what a budget can look like. Um, so this is one way how you can record your or figure out your net monthly income. I know you're probably looking at this and, and wondering what in the world <laughs> with all these um, 
lines and figures. Um, that's okay. This is a snapshot from the system bud sheet. And we're going to go through a few more slides and I'm going to go to the website and I'm going to show you how you can access this. So don't be too confused on this now. I'll show exactly what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, this is something definitely you can use to determine your uh, your net net pay. And basically, what you basically you just you know here's your income goes here, and on this side are your deductions. Basically, you're just copying the information from a pay stub or paycheck. Um, oh, Pam says you use something similar to like this. I mean, basically, you could just use your your net pay you get every couple of weeks. Um, so you don't have to just go through the calculations. But it's a good idea you're familiar with what's coming off your pay to ensure it's accurate, especially with taxes, any deductions. And if you're a military member uh, or military spouse, you know, there's a lot of pay incentives you want to make sure on there. PLD, CPAY, field pay, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't have to do the deductions, but it's a good idea to kind of know what you're looking at, what each deduction is to ensure it's accurate. Oh, Pam. Oh, that's great, Pam. Pam is on it with uh So you do it every budget. pay, Pam? That's well that's really good. That's great. I mean you gotta pick if you can do it every pay, great. But you gotta pick something a system that you're gonna stick to is the main thing, right? Um What do you think of Quicken? Me? Yeah. I like jo it. Joanne uses Quicken. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't have it anyway. Yeah, there's tons of great, uh, great programs out there, and I mean, apps. If you got a smartphone, you can do everything on your smartphone these days. Um, all right. So after you figure out your net income, uh, you know, let's figure out what your expenses are. Uh, two types of expenses: fixed and variable. Um, you know, self-explanatory. Fixed, uh, fixed items you should know. Uh, housing costs, rent, mortgage, support payments, debt repayments, uh, savings, things like that. Um, yeah, I do it the old school way too, pen and paper. Um, I do have some apps, but I'm just, I'm a really visual, <laughs> I'm a really visual person, so I write it out. I have a question, um, Corey. How are savings yeah. a fixed expense? Well, and I'll discuss that a little more in depth later, but the one thing um, to take away from from hopefully this or anything is is you got to pay yourself first. So no matter what you're doing, it is so important that you pay yourself first. You save something, right, every month. It's so important. So I put it as a fixed uh, ex uh, you know, fixed expense because you should have it, no matter, you know, however you do your budget, you should have an amount in there that you're saving, no matter what. Even if it's to start $25, you got to pay yourself first. So that's why I have it as a fixed expense. Hmm. Um, can anybody think of any other fixed expenses? You can type it, yell it out. Feel free to unmute and yeah, yell it out if you Daycare? want. Daycare, awesome, yeah. I mean, there's not. This kind of covers most of them, but uh, you know, strata fees, uh, some utilities to a certain extent, uh, maybe a transit pass, uh, property taxes. Even though you pay it annually, that's something you probably want to budget throughout the year, right? Um, variable expenses. So when you're figuring out your expenses, the fix you're going to know, the variable, these are most likely are going to be estimates. You know, how much you think you're paying for food, clothing, transportation, gas, things like that, right? You might know if you've been tracking your, your expenses, but, you know, these are, you know, your best guess, basically. <clears throat> All right, so once you have your expenses, uh, figured out, you got to record them, right? 
because your head's going to only hold so much. So <laughs> get, get them down some well. Um, so like I said, I'm going to show you this um, budget sheet on our site, but it's pretty, I mean, it covers more than I can even think of, right? Subscriptions are in there, video, water. I mean, you don't have to go this in depth. Uh, completely up to you on how you want to do it as long as you know what's going in, what's going out, and where's, where it's going. And more. So, and then, yeah, the nice thing is that it's going to calculate it. So, if you use the sheet, it's, once you figure out, you can just punch in your net income. Each section here, you punch in how much you're spending, right, on the categories. And let me see if I can use this highlighter here. And here. here. For your arrow? Oh, oh. Just, can everybody see that ugly circle I drew? Yeah, you can use your arrow too. Oh, perfect. Um, the nice thing, as it says there, is that um, it'll do the uh, do the calculations for you. So once you have your income in there, your expenses, you're going to know what you got left for your debts. Uh, after you figure out income, expenses, next record the debts. Uh, you know, record the amounts owed. And I mean, I recommend this. You don't, you, I mean, you don't have to, but I recommend just to figure out if you have a surplus or deficit, just record the minimum amount uh, due here. Uh, you never want to just pay the minimum because that's just a terrible idea. Um, but for setting the initial budget purposes, uh, use just use the minimum uh, because down here it's going to add everything up, and you're going to know again if you got a surplus, if you got a deficit, where you need to make some some adjustments, right? Um, so now that you saw all those lovely slides of the the budget sheet, uh, I'm going to show you on our website where you can access it, and I'll show you how it calculates everything for you. So hopefully it makes your your life easy. Uh, so if you share. go up to share and then uh, web browser. Can everybody see this? Takes a minute. Oh. There we go. Now we can right. see your web browser. Yep. So it's sysup.com. Website is not the easiest to navigate. Corey, um, before you before you navigate through the website, can I just share with the participants that if you bring your mouse right up to the middle of the screen, you're going to have, be able to bring the participant and the chat panel down so that you can continue chatting. Um, and give me a green check when you've done that, please, just so I know that you found it. Bring your mouse right up to the top, and then click on the, the participant panels, and then give us a green check so we know that you've got that panel. Kim, you've got it. I just told you. Great. Okay. 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 Super. Thank you. So once you get to sysip.com, um, click on the financial counseling tab. And there's tons of other um, resources on this site. So feel free. There's a financial quiz, uh, frequently asked question, a um, bunch of stuff on here. And you see you can either go to creating a budget link here or over here, budget worksheet. Click on it. I prefer Excel. Can you actually write in the PDF, or is it uh, you can. protected? No, you can write in there. So you you can use either or. I just, I the reason I like Excel is okay. This it's word protected. The reason I like Excel, I mean, I can send you the spreadsheet because you can edit the columns and um, things like that. Okay. Uh, PDF you can't. So. And Co Corey, Pam was mentioning that we can, if if we're not comfortable finding the forms ourselves, we can actually work with a counselor, right? And they can help us get started. One hundred percent. Awesome. It's probably a good idea, even if if you just want to kind of a second pair of eyes, or yeah, if you need help just getting it, get the ball rolling. Just contact, uh, no matter where you're at, 
even if you're you don't have a, a sysop office near you um, there's you can contact us through their website and they'll get you in touch with a sysop representative and we can help you know over the phone everything like that so we're completely accessible no that's great pam thank you for mentioning that so really want to want to show you um so punch in the income there Okay, just one second. We're not able to see it, so I'm just going to take it back here. Um, can you bring your mouse up to the top and click Stop Sharing, Corey, for just a moment? Great. And then just click Share Your Desktop. Share Desktop. Yep, and that way you'll be able to see it better. Thank you. Thanks, Joanna, for the tip. Can everybody see it now? There we go. Now we can see it. Perfect. Um, so the reason I like using uh, the SysUp budget sheet is just because you get the calculations, right? So I'll add it all up once you have the numbers in there. And right down here, you're going to know if you got a surplus or if you're in a deficit. Uh, so it just makes makes the calculations for you. So again, uh, it's available on our website, the com, or you can always contact me uh, directly via email, and I can email you uh, a spreadsheet. And if well. if a participant is in Hawaii, let's say, does CISIP able to do counseling in Hawaii? Do they go to Hawaii, or is it virtual counseling? Uh, it would be. Um, distance, but yes, yes, we help uh, OutCan members. Great. Absolutely. Okay. So, back to... Give me a green check when you're back to see the regular screen now. Fantastic. Everybody should be back now. Great. Is Joe Joe Montgomery? Are you uh, in Colorado? Yes, I am. Uh, oh, did I, I emailed you the other day? Yeah, you certainly did. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, you're welcome. We have a question: Is there a fee to access for military families to access these services, and how does that work? No, um, the access. The counseling service, um, and actually the planning service as well. There's no no fee, so it's a free service for uh, for military members and their families. And depending on on your location, um, if you if you're not familiar with the local SISAP office or SISAP office near you, um, you can always contact us through the website SISAP.com. That goes to Ottawa and they'll get it out to whomever's uh, closest and most relevant to you. So that's the you know, best way to do it probably, is contact through the website unless you know of what system office is near you. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Well, once we have all the numbers, um, what do you do with all that? Well, obviously it's time to move ahead and develop a plan. Uh, you know, the main thing to think about when you got all the information is building a realistic plan. Um, you know, if it's not realistic, there's very low chance uh, you're going to stick to it, right? For example, if, you know, you're all geared up because you notice you've been spending all this money on eating out and you're like, okay, I'm going to make some changes, I'm, you know, I'm never going to eat out again. Probably not realistic. <laughs> yeah, you want to cut it back, but be realistic with yourself. Right. Um, so, based on your income, you know you got to set some goals. Um, you know, whatever you want, really. It's, at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's your money. So, if you want to save for vacations, retirement, emergencies, things like that, whatever your plan is, um, but you have to pay yourself first, right? Uh, that's, that's one of the most important things to do is is saving. That should be, you know, I can't say it enough, is no matter what, 
save a little bit, right? Even if it's a little bit to start, it adds up. Um, so once you have your goals, it comes down to estimating, you know, your living expenses. How much does it cost to to live? That can be kind of kind of tough because, like I said, you're you're basically making a a guess, right? But um, until you start tracking it, do your best, and you got to think of of some expenses. Um, I'll give you an example. So I, I'm a big shopper. I like shopping. Uh, I don't go buy clothes every month, though, right? But every couple of months, I know I'm going to spend some money. So just very, say, for example, you like shoes, and you don't buy shoes every month, but you know every like three or so months, you're going to buy a pair of shoes. It's going to cost you ninety dollars. You should budget that ninety dollars at thirty dollars a month, right? Think of things like that: vehicle repairs, Christmas, things like that that all cost money. And if you can think about it and break it down um, to a per month, that's a great way to to have your your budget balance because you account for that expense, even though it's not really a monthly expense. Kind of like your pro if you have a, own a home, it's kind of like your property taxes, right? You know that. X number dollars is going to be due. It's easier to kind of act as if you're paying that each month. So when it comes up, your whole paycheck isn't gone. Um, and beyond having an emergency savings, <laughs> there you go. You know what? If you like shopping and you could put it in your budget and it's balanced, nothing wrong with it, right? Because at the end of the day, like I said, it's your money as long as you're, you know, prepared as best you can for emergencies, um, and it's not a, impacting your quality of life. Nothing and that way it's it, right? not an impulse, too. If you plan it, it's yeah. not an impulse, right? Exactly. And that's and that's why it's a good idea to have a separate, like I have this, a separate kind of rainy day savings account. I use that because I know that sometimes you know, there's going to be a sale on, I'm going to want to buy a bunch of stuff. And it's kind of like, well, I haven't been shopping in a couple of months, but I act as if I'm shopping and I transfer a little bit of money there. So I know that when I want to go buy something, it's not messing up my budget because I already got money allotted for it. So give me a green check if that kind of makes sense to people, about kind of the rainy day and larger expenses kind of breaking up. Good. Um, so I know, I know I've kind of, said it uh, about the savings, type it in or, or, or say, out. I mean, what does everybody think a good starting point uh, to have saved? Like how much to have saved? Now, when Pam mentions an excellent thing, prepaid, uh, coffee cards, visas, that's an excellent way to budget. I recommend that all the time to my clients. Um, Especially when they have, uh, they like coffees. You know, <laughs> tell them, say, you know, here, just get a prepaid card. They love it. You know, what's interesting is uh, my daughter attended your session last time, and uh, she she got a prepaid coffee card, and she she stops when it's gone. Well, you're a you're a good, you got a smart bunch here. Uh, I mean, yeah, typically they stay three to six months. That's that's a good, and that's living expenses, right? If something were to happen, three to six months. Some um, some people recommend a year. I personally think that's, that's way too much. Um, but it does depend on your situation. You know, if you've got a very secure employment, chances are you're not going to be laid off, you know. You're not a homeowner. Uh, you're, you know, you rent a small apartment. You know, you might need only a couple months, right? But rule of thumb, probably even about, you know, three to six months is a safe bet for for emergencies. Just if, you got to think if something were to happen, how much would I need to to be okay, right? Because you can't plan for everything. Um, you, you know, you can just prepare yourself as to the best of your ability. All right, so once we have the, you know, plan going ahead, um, it's just pretty much 
truck ahead. Uh, you know, go about your your daily business, um, and, and you got to start to track your expenses because everything you did. Oh, uh, Barb, do you have a question? Oh, I was just it was with regard to the uh, how much to save in terms of yes. emergencies, and and I guess when I think about that, I think about it in terms of how long do I need to provide a buffer before I can adjust my income to match my expenses. So if that's you know three to three to six months to find another job or to make significant adjustments, so that's I guess where I was coming from with the three to six months. So. It's not an arbitrary number. It's 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 what, from my perspective anyway, it's, it's how long can you pull up your bootstraps and figure out some other plan because that's what you need. That's what has to happen in an emergency, right? Oh, that's it. Um, so I agree with you. Yeah, no, and that's that's an excellent point because for you it might be three to six months. For somebody, it might be a little bit longer, but. You're exactly right. You got to think. Okay, if something happens. You know, how much time do I need to to kind of get things sorted out? So excellent. Thank you for bringing that point up. You're welcome. Um, so tracking your expenses. Why do you want to do this? Um, well, basically, you want to do this, or you got to do this because if you don't, everything we talked about and did before really is irrelevant. Uh, because one. You're not really going to know what's going on with your your budget, right? Um, you know, gives you a reality reality check. Where's your money going? You can't make realistic adjustments without knowing where your money's going, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, ideally, you know, do it for three months. That'll give you a, a good average of you know where your money's going, what you're spending things on. Worst case, at least take a look at a month. Um, that'll give you, if you haven't done it before, trust me, it'll, give, it'll be a pretty eye-opening experience. Um, from firsthand, I meet people all the time uh, that they just throw in arbitrary numbers, and that's okay. I mean, like I said, it's your best best estimate. Uh, but I get their bank statements, and when I actually sit there and do the math for the last three months, the averages, nine times out of ten. They had no idea. Sometimes they'd be like, "Well, I knew I was spending a little bit more, you know, on on such and such category, but I never thought it was that much." They're like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah," you know. So it's a really good gauge to do, you know, three month average. And I know um, it's kind of a pain to to track it. Um, so one, I mean, there's a couple resources you can use. One, I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, is I'll throw in the chat uh, the mint.com and that's a good way to help track your expenses. I know a lot of online banking resources now they kind of track your your spending, um, but you can use the mint.com and basically it'll categorize where your money's going. Um, so it kind of helps you, right? Or you can you know. Like Pam says, every paycheck kind of go through uh, your bank statement, right? But you got to think if you, if, you, if you can do that, that's probably the best way to do it. But is it something that you're realistically going to stick to, right? Because it's all about finding something that you're going to stick to, right? It's about making changes that are long lasting. Um, but yeah, check out the the mint.com. That's a great resource uh, to help track your expenses. All right. Going forward, um, your budget. Think of your budget as is it's a living document, right? Uh, you know, especially if if you're just looking to you've never done a budget before, um, you're gonna make uh, adjustments to it, right? Um, so don't worry. Realistically, if you've never done a budget before, you're starting one out. You're probably looking at two to three months before you're getting kind of a good idea of getting everything balanced. Um, you know, and tracking the expenses are important because it, it allows you to see how close you were to your estimates. Um, you know, are you living within your means, right? Or are you using credit? Um, how's, your, how's your savings plan going? 
And again, you're not going to be able to make those necessary adjustments if you don't know where your money's going, right? You might think you're spending a bunch on groceries when in fact it's, it's more on eating out or, or vice versa. So, what does a budget do for you? What does it really do for you? Well, it lets you organize your finances, um, you know, keeps credit card use in check, make sure you're building your credit carefully, um, controls those impulse purchases, right? If you're following a budget, you're going to kind of double think before making that purchase. Um, you know, you're, it's just going to broaden your knowledge, your financial knowledge, which is always uh, a positive thing. And also, you know, it allows you to achieve your goals, your savings goals, whatever they may be, right? Pay off your debts, things like that. Why is it important to stick to your budget? Um, you have a partner, obviously communication. Uh, that's one of the biggest breakdowns in, in relationships. Uh, a lot of problems stem from, from financial. Um, you know, knowing where your money's going, right? So you can make those changes, adjustments. Um, living within your, your means, right? Stay in touch with reality. Are you spending more than you make? Uh, achieving your goals? Having peace of mind, right? That comes down to the emergency savings, right? Knowing your expenses are, are handled. Uh, avoiding those impulse purchases. And, you know, seizing opportunities. That's where that rainy day fund comes in, right? You set the money aside. There's a big sale on, something like that. Well, you can pick that stuff up because you have the money kind of set aside for that. Okay. All right, so I know earlier we chatted about uh, some tips on, you know, make more money or spend less. Uh, some of these, it really kind of depends on your situation. I know it's not the easiest thing to make more money, right? Some, so, you, you know, you can only work so much, right? You have to have a life. Uh, so some of these might not be realistic. depends on your situation. Um, but obviously, getting a second job or finding part-time work, um, working from home, uh, you know, I know uh, some military families, uh, you know, the spouse, if she has times, you know, she'll babysit, run a daycare. Uh, there's various online work as well where you don't have to leave the home, right? You can work from home. Uh, sell items you don't need, right? If you find you've you got a bunch of stuff just laying around, have a garage sale, um, things like that. Oh, Pam, you run a daycare? Oh, good. Um, and, you know, if, if, you, if you have the space, sometimes uh, renting a roof, uh, that might be, uh, might be an option. Obviously, you know, if you got kids and things like that, you know, maybe rent is a stranger, but it's all situational. Corey, yeah. when we were doing the practice, uh, Carrie Lee was saying rent storage space in your home. So if you have extra storage space, you don't have to uh, necessarily have the person stay, but you can have their stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Or an Airbnb bedroom. Yeah. What's an Airbnb? Uh, for people who are traveling, and, uh, an alternative uh, source, which I actually use a lot of the time, is instead of staying in hotels, there's a couple of different options online for um, using other people's homes. So you may be able to get a home totally on you know totally private the whole home or people uh if you have a particularly you know pleasant place to promote um you can get people who are just staying in a room in your house so airbnb it's, it's an airbnb yeah and uh yeah, i have lots of friends that have done this and it's uh it's it's pretty lucrative in terms of depending on the location and if you've got something to sell you know, if you've got a beautiful view, or you're in a in a prime location, or it's just out in the in the mountains or the bush or whatever, it it, it meets everybody's needs. There's, and it's quite a uh, quite a uh, 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 
industry these days. There's Airbnb and uh, vacation rental by owner, and you can either rent your whole house or uh, a room at a time. Hmm. Thank Just you. Check, no, thank you for sharing. Check into taxes and things like that because you wouldn't want to go to jail, but it's, no. it's happening all over the place. And it's usually how I travel now because it's uh, usually cheaper and it's much more interesting. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Second part we talked about, uh, you know, reducing your expenses. Uh, this is probably might be a little more realistic for most people. Uh, you know, reducing utilities, cable, cell phone, um, eating in more, buying in bulk, um, starting a garden. Kind of depends on where you're where you're living, but I mean. Taking public transit or carpooling, if at all possible. Um, looking for cheap and free entertainment. That's a, that's a big thing too, right? If you can find cheap or free things to do on the weekends, uh, that that'll help. Uh, reduce rental expense. If you if you can, uh, you know, it might be you might have to downsize if you're renting, right? If you do, if you had an extra room, you're not really using it. It might be more. Uh, feasible to, to downsize. Uh, another big thing too is, is using a meal planner. Does everybody know what I'm what I'm talking about when I say a meal planner? Uh, no, what Give is a meal a green planner? Check. All right, so I wish my, my computer's on the, uh, on the uh, frets. So basically uh, a meal planner um, is what you're going to be making for the week. You can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I have some great meal planners on, uh, so I can, actually I can probably email them out once I get my system back up. Um, and basically, I mean, you don't have to do every meal if you don't want to, but basically you write out, okay, what you're going to cook, and Pam knows what I'm talking about, and then on the side of the on the this one sheet, so you write out you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, however many days you want to do, what you're going to cook, and then on the other half of the sheet is what you need to make those items. So you know exactly when you go to the grocery store what you're going to eat. There you go. What you're going to eat and what you need to buy. So it saves you time and money, right? Because you're not wandering around the grocery store wondering what you're going to eat and you're buying random stuff because you're kind of hungry and you might eat that eventually. So huge, huge thing. I do it. I do all my cooking uh, Sundays, and it saves me so much time and money. Uh, so definitely recommend um, using a meal planner, even if you're doing it for you know four or five days a week to start. Um, you know, try it out. Yeah, exactly, Pam. You know exactly what you need, how to cook it, and you're not wondering, right? Well, what's, what's for dinner tonight? So it's awesome. I do it. All right. Um, so let's just talk about some common things that might happen or that can cause some financial problems for people. Obviously, needs versus wants, living outside your means, overspending, um, easy access to money and credit, especially with interest rates low, you know, kind of be conscious of what you're borrowing and how much, right? Because interest rates, you know, what goes down is going to come up. Uh, sales strategies, you know, think about it. You know, you know, is that sale really the best deal, um, or is the sale kind of motivating you to buy buy items that you may not need? Uh, and that's that's kind of like rational versus irrational financial decisions. Uh, you know what? And sometimes in life, unforeseen circumstances, there's things that happen in your life that you're not going to be able to control. Um, all you can do is be prepared to the best of your ability, and that's where having the uh, emergency fund, having a bit of money tucked away, that's where that comes in. That's why it's so important to pay yourself first, right? Because you're not going to be able to plan for everything that, that life throws at you, but if you can be semi-prepared the best you can, that's all you can do.
<laughs> there you go. Yeah, the, the uh, I, I've recommended that too. Uh, th- you know, put your credit card in the bowl of water, throw it in the freezer. Debts. All right. So this is another area. Um, some people might have a problem tackling or kind of where to start. So getting your debts under control. That's also another key to uh, you know financial health and making sure your balance or your uh, budget's balanced. You know, prioritize prioritize your debts. So obviously, some debts are going to be more important than others. Uh, if you have the ability to or room, um, you know, move move higher interest debts to lower interest credit cards or lines of credit. Um, if you got a room on on credit cards, there might be um, promotional balance transfer uh, rates where you're paying zero percent for six or eight months. Right? Talk to your creditors. Um, more often than not, if you talk to them, sometimes you can, if you're carrying a credit card balance, uh, sometimes you can get your credit card switched, especially if you have a rewards card. Um, I'll tell you one thing. If you've got a rewards card and you're carrying a balance on it and you're paying a bunch of interest, the rewards that you're accumulating, it's not worth the interest you're paying. So sometimes if you switch to a non-rewards card, the interest rate can go from 19% to 11%. That's huge, right? So if you're carrying a balance, consider that. Um, and if you need to, sometimes you might be able to defer payments, right? A loan payment or something like that. Uh, consolidating, if it makes sense, if it's realistic, uh, that's always an option. Um, and if you have numerous debts, you got to create uh, a repayment plan. Uh, best way to do it uh, is, is, you know, doing the snowball or PowerPay. Uh, there's a site there, PowerPay.org, or you know, do the snowball method. Who who's kind of familiar? with the snowball method of tackling debt? I have no idea about that. Joanna, no? All right. So, I again, I am a visual individual. So, I'm going to show you, hopefully this makes sense, I'm going to show you on, I'm just going to share uh, Excel. I'm going to show you guys on Excel the idea behind Corey, it. Corey, one yeah. point that I was I was thinking is that when you when a person is in debt, they the the last thing they want to do is talk to somebody about it because they're afraid, right? So that's the hardest probably thing to do is to actually go to somebody and say to to arrange a repayment. Is that must be very challenging. Yeah, it is. It is initially, right? Because you know, they're not sure where to begin, they might be embarrassed. Um but but trust me, like I said earlier, not doing something about it or thinking that eh, it'll get better better if you know if I just wait a bit, um, it's probably going to get worse, right? So I understand what you're feeling, but you know, take some steps and do something about it now. And you know, right. sit up here, you know, and it, and if if you know you're not 100 percent comfortable, like I said, I'll provide my email address. You can always you know email me too if you have any questions too, and I'll. I'm more than willing to answer your questions. You know, you don't have to give me specifics. If you just want to ask a general question, being like my friend or whatever it is, email me. That right? first step. It's that first step to exactly. take a courageous start, conversation. Start that conversation. Great. Thank you. Uh, can everybody see this? Uh, see my spread or see the Excel? Can people see the, yeah, there's nothing on it. It's just a blank Excel sheet. Okay. Yeah. All right. So all right. So I'm just going to explain the Snowball method. So we'll say you got three cards, Visa, a MasterCard, and a Bay card. Uh, 5,000 here, 4,000 here. And four thousand here. So those are the amounts owed. Uh, here's the interest rates. Uh, I don't know if they're realistic or not. But those are the interest rates. Uh, minimum payments. All right. So 
This is calling us to watch you. Oh, that's the minimum payment. That's the interest rates. So say you have an extra $400. And that's a month. What do you want to do with that? Do you want to put 100 on each or what? Uh, would it be best to pay down one depending on the interest rate? Exactly. So what you want to do, you can do this one of two ways. Uh, exactly, the highest interest. So some people, so say this was math reasons, it makes sense to put on the highest interest, but if for motivation reasons, if you had a smaller balance, you could always tack or b tackle by balance, but it makes more sense to do it by interest. So say each month you had 400 extra dollars. So you'd make the minimum on your Visa, the minimum on your MasterCard, but the Bay card, because the highest interest, you would actually pay 500, right? So you keep paying 500 a month. Once that's paid off, you're already used to paying $500 a month, right? So you don't let that just go into your budget again. You tackle the next highest interest, which is your Visa at 19%. So that $80 minimum payment becomes 580. Once that's paid off, you take that 580 that you used to have been paying, throw it on the MasterCard. So that's the fastest and most effective way to pay down, uh, pay down and tackle your debt. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, give us a green check if it makes sense. The red X if you need some more explanation on that. We've got lots of green checks going on. Good. And there's there's great uh, resources out there where you can just punch in all the debts you have, the interest rates, and it'll it'll calculate how much time you need um, before you're you're out of debt. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Right. Another thing, you know, use the resources that are available to you. Uh, there's so many resources out there. Uh, there's, you know, us, CISA Financial, the MFRC, so many online tools and resources. Go to CISA.com, check that out. Uh, you know, friends and family. Um, there's, you know, I'm sure all you guys have some some friends or family that are you know, smarter than I am. Use them <laughs> for <laughs> use them for advice or. Um, help splitting expenses and costs, right? Maybe they can help babysit sometimes. Maybe a family member will go to Costco with you and share, uh, you know, the expenses. Me personally, I don't use Costco that much because it's just me. Uh, but if you've got a family, it makes sense. Okay, so I think that's it for the presentation part. And I'm just going to do a little wrap up and then we're gonna have a Q&A. Uh, so I know some of you were asking about, you know, what can CISA do? Uh, so I'll talk about a little bit about the financial counseling. Uh, it's free and confidential. If you're a military member, we don't use the, the chain of command. Um, so if you come speak to us, it's completely confidential unless you're officially referred through a unit. Uh, but if you come in on your own fruition, completely confidential. Uh, some of the things we can help with, um, budgeting, helping you uh, manage the personal money management. Uh, if you're having some debt issues or issues with creditors, we can help out with that. Uh, depending on your situation, there are uh, loans and grants that you might be eligible for. Oh, thank you, Pam. That's, that's awesome to hear that, uh, that you enjoy working with us. And, you know, we're accessible across Canada and internationally, right? So no matter where you're at, we'll find a way to, to work with you and help you out. Um, so another initiative that... Barb has a question? Yes. Oh, hi, sorry. Um, can, is, is, with, with the services that you provide, does it have to be the member who calls or can the spouse or a dependent call? Great question. Nope. Um, spouses are eligible uh, for the counseling service, um, and a dependent can be. 
it, it's based on the definition of a family member. Uh, I believe it's under the CF1 definition of family. But for sure, spouses are, are eligible for to receive the, the counseling service. Okay, great. I mean, it would be great for a, a youth who is maybe, you know, over 16, but still a dependent, but interested in developing a strategy for financial planning for the future to be able to contact too. So it'd be interesting to uh, know whether they would have a problem contacting you. It would be an interesting article to write in our newsletters, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, any sort of any sort of like, like exception, um, typically the, the counselor wouldn't see released um, uh, members, but per the, the counselor, they can always make exceptions, right, based on the case. Okay. It's kind of situation by situation. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the newer initiatives uh, CISIP was offering is, is a, it's called a cash savings plan. Uh, basically, this is a, an easy way for members to to start building some sort of savings. Uh, the nice thing with this is that you can set it up as a pay allotment, which basically means if you want to save fifty dollars a month, your paycheck's going to be twenty five dollars less. So it comes off your pay before you get paid, like a forced savings. Uh, and the fees um, for the investments and things like that are a little bit lower than the industry standard. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, if if you know if you are a, a military member or no military member. Oh, Pam, you got the RESPs. So you, Pam, you must be a planning client then. Well, good. Pam knows all about our services. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So SysUp obviously. Uh, it's not just the counseling, there's savings, uh, investments, and the big part is the insurance as well. So, again, check out our website because um, there's a bunch of information on there, not just on the counseling if, in case you're interested in it. Uh, and, and really the whole purpose of why we're here is to look after uh, the financial health of, of the members and the Canadian Force members. Barb, you have a question? Sorry, I feel a little guilty no. taking up your time. But um, so one of the uh, last slides talked about TFSAs, and and um, I can't remember when we did the presentation last uh, January with you whether this came up or not. Um, but with the CRA situation in terms of um, uh, residency status. Which affects TFSAs and a number of other uh, credits and allowances in the Canadian uh, income tax um, world. Are are you con are you um, aware of all of those situations, or is there? I guess I'm just trying to find out whether or not um, we can provide you with some scenarios that have occurred in the past that you might be able to dig into to be able to provide services to the folks in the state. Like if if if, if a, the residency status, if, if somebody chooses not to be a deemed resident of Canada, it, it adversely affects their TFSAs and other kinds of things like that. So I just wanted to bring that up in terms of of being aware of some of these other challenges that we have in the U.S. as it relates to some of those kinds of Canadian-based uh, benefits. That's an excellent point. Um, and that's something that probably would be best, and I can bring it up um, to one of the financial planners. So it, that would be great. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, we talked about a year ago about this in terms of whether there's uh, people who have specialized knowledge in terms of the folks in the U.S. And, and I've talked to Ron and, and I know that Joanne has talked to Christine and I, it would just be great to have a, a, an awareness that there is a, a component of system that, that really, really understands this stuff because, frankly, you know, there's so many different lines of um, 
are so many so many different ways that people are finding out this information in the states that if we know that we can call CISA and there will be a specialist to understand some of those issues, it would be really, really helpful for us. Yeah, I'd like to chime in on that one too and just pile in because we had so many people in the past. Now that the residency thing has changed, it's a, it, it should be better, but we've had people that had to get tax accountants and lawyers to work to, to get their cases sorted out with CRA. So it's a big, it was a big issue. It should be resolved by now, but there's still probably some people out there lingering with some of these issues trying to get back tax things sorted out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, inquire about that. I remember I I I don't want to talk too much about it because I know um I believe we had a member that that was in our office that had some issue with that. Uh, and as yeah. far as I know, there's some there's there is some specialized uh, something you claim with the CRA. Yeah, it's all about residency status, and, I, and as, as Joanne said, I think that we've I think we've resolved it from an education perspective down here, or at least we're trying to. But and and that's from both the MFS and the military side. So I think we're trying to get that that message out to everybody. But where where I think that there's some merit in some education component is with with CISIP in that if people are calling CISIP about these things um, or CISIP is advising about these things, they're very familiar with these these kind of challenges that have come up in the past. So hopefully yeah, we're can... on a route to, you know, solving this. But as Joanne said, there still could be some people who haven't, um, you know, been, haven't jumped onto the bandwagon and don't, don't know about it. And so that's, that's mm -hmm. all. Sorry, jo Joanne, were you going to say something? Yeah, well, no, I, yeah, and I, I have lots of different uh, case information with stuff because uh, we also have people uh, not only for coming, crossing the border here, but then, of course, while they're here and they have CRA and IRS issues, so it gets pretty, could get pretty messy depending on the situation. But uh, I could talk to, to Ron, Chris, uh, and anybody else at CISIP that would like to uh, get further clarification on some of the stuff we've had. Yeah, and Ron's in Ottawa too, right? So he'll he'll be able to, if he doesn't have the answer, he'll be able to get the, the answer. So let's start the conversation with him. But I'm pretty sure that the planners, because uh, they're the ones that deal with the taxes, so somebody or, or they would have better information regarding that than, than me. Great. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Q&A. Are there any, I know we kind of did some questions throughout. Are there any questions or comments? Anything? Yes, Barb. I'm just looking forward to the next five. This was great. Thank you. <laughs> Please spread the word because uh, we'd like to really have a full houses at these sessions. It would be great. I know. I can't believe that this is only the number that we have. Like, this is such an important topic. And yes. it's certainly a big issue down here these days. I'm just, I'm, I'm floored that this is the number of people that we got. But you know what? We're going to keep plugging away. There we go. We, we keep we will keep promoting it through the members and MFS, and we have promoted it uh, uh, during our uh, was it uh, member and spouses coffee type thing, and uh, even that you know it's uh, the people that uh, we have a mixed bag of the people that would normally attend attend. So it's kind of like we keep putting the word out. I don't know what to do to increase it other than communication. Right. I think the next time I'm gonna I'm gonna do a dance and song and dance on before we start. Maybe that'll bring people <laughs> or take them uh, away. And, you know, awesome. also, if if one or two people or, or a handful it doesn't matter. You know, if, if at least one person takes something away of value from this presentation, to me that's worth it. If I make an impact for one person, hey, I'll you know that's that's worth it to me. 
And you've made a positive impact for many people here. That's right. Barb, do you have a question? Oh, no, it's just a comment. It's it's just a piece of, you know, it's it's like the, uh, I can't remember what kind of shampoo it was, but if one friend tells another friend tells another friend, we all really just have to bring another person back the next time, you know? Exactly. Ultimately, this will, people will see it's not a scary thing. It's not impersonal. It's very personal. And uh, there's a lot to be gained by using this kind of a platform. Yeah. And the French uh, the French Budget 101 is happening Thursday, and then next Tuesday we're going to be talking about severance, how to invest your severance. So I'm going to throw my email in the, uh, in the chat. So feel free, if you have any questions, anything like that, feel free to email me. Um, and you're going to have an after-session email sent to me, and I'll send it out, uh, Corey, with all those links? Yep. Super. And thank you. Thank you all for... Um, coming and you're yeah you were great what a pleasure it was to have you Corey thank you very much and thank you for coming out so uh, just to exit out you click on the red X at the top right hand side of the screen and uh, Joe Montgomery I'm very thrilled that you're here today yeah thank you for happy. coming happy and I'll be promoting it and uh, thank you very much uh, PEI for putting this on and thanks Corey for everything it's a lot of fun you're welcome. Thanks very much, everybody. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks, Corey. You rocked it. I so appreciate you being here. Yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Some great questions came up. Yeah. So what